Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. I got a CCNP route quick quiz for you. A uh, question that gave me a huge amount of anxiety the first time I actually saw it happen on live equipment, so I want to make sure that you see it before you see it on an exam or in a lab. What in the heck causes the message you're about to see on a live Cisco router? And for the rest of that question, let's go ahead and go to the router. Now I've got a smaller window than usual. There's a little method to my madness there, so stick with me. But nothing tricky here. All I'm going to do is try to start an OSPF process. But you'll notice a couple of things here. First off, it didn't drop into router config mode. And then I got this nasty message, OSPF process one cannot start. What in the world is causing that? We will find out in just a moment. Just a quick message here. Thanks for making me the number one instructor at Udemy.com. And right now we've got some huge specials going on, including my CCNP all-in-one $99 course and plenty of free courses out there as well. Notice that every NP course is $44 with a discount code. Just want to show you this really quick. Anytime you go to any of my courses on Udemy, the paid ones, of course, just click redeem it and put in the code that's going to be mentioned right there and you'll get a huge discount. You'll watch this one go down to $99. For the free courses, I'm afraid I can't pay you to take those. Uh, no discount code there, but always look for a discount code right there. That's a great way to go. Now let's take a look at that live router again. And boy, again, the first time that this ever happened to me, you know, there's just that moment of what? What do you mean the process can't start it? It's always started before. Uh, this time it didn't, and for one simple reason, it's easy to do in a lab. This is the message you're going to see if you don't have an IP address configured on an interface. And all I did here was go to the serial zero interface where I usually start with router one and just took the IP address off. But it's really easy in a lab environment, you know, you've taken some commands off, you put some on, etc., and all of a sudden you don't have any IP addresses. This is the one, this is the message you're going to get when you try to start OSPF. And the, in its entirety, OSPF process one cannot start. There must be at least one up IP interface for the OSPF, or excuse me, for OSPF to use as the router ID, of course, or the RID. So all you'd have to do. This is where I learned to read the entire message years ago because it's really easy just to look at the first part of that output and say, oh, great, it can't start. Well, it's telling you why, uh, but for the exam, it's probably a pretty good idea to know that. So now when we go router OSPF1 after putting an IP address on 00 or creating a loopback, I could have done that as well. Notice we get the router prompt and now we can continue as normal. Thanks for taking today's CCNP route quick quiz. I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making us part of your CCNP success story.